Oh, be careful, honey. Christy was the outgoing child. She was the one who charmed people. Just a happy little girl. Dear Ma, I would like you to be my very best mother forever, and if there's any work, I would be glad to do it. I appreciate the things that you've done for me. Love, Christy. It's very precious to me. Oh, so you still have remembrance and feelings. A life of precious moments. Just sitting here, my eyes are tearing. Moments bottled up and held tight. Memories of a precious life from a precocious teen. Christy Ann Fornoff, just 13 years old in 1984, full of spirit with a streak of independence her mom Carol was all too familiar with. Christy's can-do attitude was apparent in everything she did, including her job as a local paper girl. It was May 9th, 1984. Her siblings had gone to a friend's house when Christy turned to her mom. She Wasn't said, there. Mom, you know what? I have someone I need to collect from. They, they told me to come back. And so, and then there's people where I'm supposed to ask them if they want to sign up for the paper. Well, I'll, I'll just go with you. She had been on the job for five months. Carol says she was a businesswoman far beyond her years. In the 80s, this was pretty normal for kids right. to, yes. to be on a paper route, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. yes, and now collecting. There was responsibility, financial learning, you know how to count money. She and her mom got to the Rocky Point Apartments in Tempe that evening when a tenant started chatting with Carol. So Christy said, Mom, after a few minutes, I'm gonna go, you know where I'm gonna go. You know the couple that lives around the, yes, I know where you are, honey, I'll meet you there in a few minutes. But minutes later, when Carol went to meet her daughter, she found her bike on the ground. It was silent. Christy wasn't there. And I yelled, Christy, Christy, where are you? I didn't go up to the house. I don't know why, but I didn't. So we ran home. Old newspaper carrier disappeared. The frantic search began for the teen. Police, family, friends, everyone was looking for Christy. And one of the most helpful people in the search, the apartment's maintenance man, 29-year-old Don Beatty. He just really embedded himself with the investigation to help. Oh, yeah. Oh, he, was he was doing interviews. He was. Right. We went through storage sheds. We went through everything on the property. Carol made a plea to the public. She believed her daughter was still alive. They said, you know, if you've got Christy, let her go. She is a forgiving child, and we would forgive her. you. Please let her go. So it was a matter of begging for her, which I would do anything to get her back. Days later, a police chaplain showed up at the foreign office door. He said, I'm so sorry to tell you, but we found her body down at the apartment complex. It was maintenance man Don Beatty who found the body. That's when he became a main character in the case and the main suspect. It was just this whole eerie feeling around the complex. By chance, we just literally went to his apartment and knocked on the door. I can't remember exactly what we had asked him, but he had invited us into his apartment. Did you notice anything off? Oh, I noticed a lot of things off. Jim Fry was a news photographer for Channel 3 in Phoenix at the time. To this day, he still is. He was only 25 years old, standing with a news camera, at Don Beatty's front door. You think that there's something sinister that lurks behind that face? He kept on denying everything. He felt like he was just this victim of circumstances and I don't know why they're, they're investigating me. I don't know why they came into my apartment looking for evidence. I just don't know why. Uh, and he kept that going for the entire interview. If anybody out there finds a body and they're going to have to go through the same thing I'm going through, well, I feel sorry for that person. Police kept tabs on Beatty and swabbed his apartment for evidence. Carol and Roger shared the same uneasy feeling, a hunch Don Beatty killed their daughter. Then to their disbelief and horror, 
He showed up at Christie's funeral and caught Roger's eye as he mourned with a family friend. I said, don't move. I'm going to show you the killer. He walked down the side aisle across the front of the church. I turned her around and I says, that's the guy. He came, he, I said, stick with me. Don't, don't let him, him near Carol, but stick with me. And she did and he came up and shook my hand. Yeah, he even signed the book. You know how you sign a yeah. book. Days later, the evidence came back. Christie's DNA, blood and vomit found in Beatty's closet. Evidence of rape on Christie's body. Oh, we are hoping and praying that she did not experience that before she, she was choked. And to be full of peace about that, I have to just choose what I believe, that she was not aware. It's just really spooky finding out later about circumstances and realizing that you were in the same apartment with this man. Where she died. Where she died. Oh, I won't um, run over with my friends to Circle K anymore. When they're gone at night and you're home alone, lock all the windows and doors. A whole way of life kind of ceased after her death. That whole world of innocence was gone. It changed everybody in Phoenix. Mesa, Tempe, it changed everybody. I mean, kids now you know, walk closer to their parents when they're in shopping malls. The road to justice for the Fornoffs didn't come easy. Trial one for Don Beatty ended in a hung jury. Carol and Roger were angry and shocked. But before trial two could begin, Beatty slipped up and said something to the prison psychiatrist. He just was talking. And he said, I didn't mean to kill her, but she was crying for her mother. And the guard went, what? What did you say? That became admissible in court. This time, not only was he found guilty, but sentenced to death. Don Beatty absolutely did not want to die. It would be decades later, but in 2011, Beatty would see his final day. Uh, the inmate is moved the night before to the death cell, which is in the death chamber. Barrett Morrison was the public information officer for the Arizona Department of Corrections that year. Marson says Beatty was so scared of being executed, he tried to beat a ticking clock. He tried to put himself into a diabetic coma with his last meal. He uh, ordered so much sugar stuff. He had ordered ice cream and cookies and regular Coke and all those things, but and we figured out he was really just trying to put himself into a diabetic coma because he did not want to die. And life, even in prison, was better than no life. When you think back to his execution, is there one memory of that day that really sticks out in your mind? Oh, it, it really was his last words. Because his last words were directed straight to the Fornoff family, sitting right in front of him, waiting for their daughter's killer to die. The curtain opens up and he looks at us. Each one of us felt he looked directly into our eyes alone. He said, you will see your daughter in heaven. In his yeah. own way, he apologized and, and we all felt at ease about it. If you don't forgive someone. You're carrying this bag of rocks on your shoulders. You are look. hurting. You've got to let go. That person doesn't care. Through forgiveness, the Fornoffs found purpose here in Pine, Arizona. For your own self, you forgive. Christy House in the Pines. Christy House in the Pines. That's the name of their quaint home, where for years they've hosted retreats for families who have also lost children to murder. We, we hope that we are hope for them. You can't help but notice a theme at their home. Christie's favorite, butterflies. After Don Beatty's final trial, Carol and Roger went to Colorado to get away and reflect. They went on a river rafting trip when a yellow butterfly flew onto Carol's shoulder and tucked itself inside her life jacket. Butterfly this butterfly was, was safe. He was inside. For it's like a two and a half hour trip down this river, the whole time. The whole time. Gosh, that had to be Christy. She got her wings in heaven, but she needed our help. So she came down and stayed with us. And it just, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so 
feeling so good. Forever, their little girl. She has enriched our lives even though she didn't live. Her spirit preserved in moments and memories and in cherished letters that come to life with every word. I appreciate the things that you've done for me. Love, Christy.